In Amplify Science Population and Resources, Chapter 2, Lesson 2.3, you'll be using the sim in Activity 2 and Activity 4. Um, so in order to use the sim, remember that you need to uh, launch the Populations and Resource sim. And if you haven't already done so, um, you should have installed it from self-service. Um, you can see the sim and self-service on your iPad. Remember that uh, the Population and Resources sim does have to be installed from self-service to launch. When you launch it, you'll be asked if you're using an iPad, so select yes. And you're choosing the third, uh, three populations mode, excuse me, that's the middle one uh, for us to do this activity in this section. Um, you'll want to notice that the uh, energy storage molecules are represented, and you can turn that on and off by using the switch on the upper right, um, and you can make sure that you're in the three populations mode that you need to be um, on the left using the hamburger menu. Um, so as you uh, look at the organisms, uh, you want to uh, make sure that you understand that those orange uh, canisters, so to speak, are their energy storage molecules, and we can turn that up uh, off and on to the top right where you sit, where it says show ESMs. But we can also click on an individual. It'll show how many ESM units there are. So in this case, this uh, fur bill had 21 at the moment. Uh, it also shows what it's doing, like you've seen before. As you're doing these, uh, you want to think about how the energy storage molecules are represented in different parts of the sim. Where are the energy storage molecules found in an ecosystem? And where do we bugs get their energy storage molecules in the sim? Um, so those things will be important. You can see on the right side that you can see how many of each individuals you have. Um, and it kind of helps you remember which ones are which um, as we click. Um, in this sim, uh, you're going to be trying to understand the investigation question. What can change the number of births in a population? Um, that's our point. So we're going to be kind of looking for that. Kind of goes back to our jellyfish question. So uh, you're going to be using the sim in that three populations mode, and you're going to be doing it for 20 uh, time units. Now, if you look at the top, the right, I have a time unit right now of 204. Uh, so obviously, you can run it for a lot longer. You can restart it if you need to. Um, but you do want to uh, kind of watch that time. You can slow it down or speed it up um, at that point. And as we uh, move around, um, you're going to uh, artificially set the energy storage molecule units uh, in the sim. So we can also see um, a food web. If you click on the bottom left, uh, it'll pop up this food web. And it shows the arrows that represent where the energy is going. So the green leaves are eaten by the... Um, the wee bugs and the wee bugs get the energy from the green leaves. So since they get the energy, the arrow points to them. Just as the fur bills have an arrow pointing to them from the wee bugs, because the fur bills eat the wee bugs, and that's where they're getting their energy. So the arrows always point the direction that the energy is traveling to, because the other organism ate them. And uh, we can uh, see on the right again. Remember that there's the panel, so you can see how many. It's the same kind of information, it just shows the food web. For your activity, you may be asked to change the number of an organism, so I'm adding fur bills by click clicking on the plus. Uh, you'll be able to lock it to that number by hitting the lock and saying, got it. Um, so now the fur bill population can't change, and we can run this simulation for another 20 time units, um, and we can see what's going to happen to that po population. Because we locked the fur bill population, we won't see that change, but we want to see what happens to the wee bugs uh, and even to the uh, plants. So as we watch, we can see that uh, the wee bugs population is going down a little bit. Um, we could, you know, see what would happen over time if uh, the fur bill population was consistently 100 individuals. Um, like I said, it's helpful for you to know how to do this for your assignment. When you want to uh, view the uh, analyze the graph, you can uh, click the analyze button on the upper left, and uh, that will show you the population 
and other characteristics of the green leaves, tree bugs, and fur bills. We can also change the amount of time uh, that the uh, or the range of time that it's showing you this information for by moving the slider at the bottom. The blue highlighted area is even adjustable, so if you uh, click on that, you can uh, open and close the show range window. Um, it shows you about 20 uh, time units, I believe, so you can see what's going on over that time. Now, uh, when I change the uh, fur bill population to 100, uh, we can see at the end of the graph that they declined a little bit, but I didn't wait for the 20 units, so we don't have that long of the time. So I hope that helps you understand all the features that you need to use in your activity.